Yeah, so I'm Michael. I'm Michael, originally from Ghana, and um, this is my testimony of how I came to know Jesus Christ. So I was born in a family um, where my dad worshipped idols. Um, traditionally, we, we worship idols. We've got little idols that um, they sacrifice things to. And um, yeah, and my, my mom was a Christian. My dad was a traditional man. So growing up, um, I, I experienced both sides, um, the part where we did sacrifices to idols and um, ate from uh, the, the, the table of the devil. At the same time, went to church as a child growing up. Um, so that was pretty much a major part of my life till I was about 14, 15, when my dad then converted to Christianity and then the whole family became Christian. Around that time, when I was um, 18, I remember just finishing um, college, I, um, no, high school. I, I remember finishing high school, and um, one of my friends gave me a book. It's about Buddhist um, meditation techniques. So I read the book, and he was he was hyping it up, and I thought, what's up with this thing? I read the book, decided to give it a go. So I sat in our living room. I remember switching all the lights off, and then just sat in the lotus position and started to meditate. Shut my mind out. Before I knew it. Um, I was sort of um, rocking back and forth. But when I opened my eyes, I was not actually rocking back and forth. So it was something that was happening internally. And I remember at some point, I felt like I had floated out of my body. And uh, that, that shook me. And then I returned and I took the book like, well, there's something to this. Now, around all that time, I, was a, I thought I was a Christian. Because I, I did attend church. I was baptized at 14. I gave my life to Christ at 14. And I remember t telling the uh, elders of the church, I want to be baptized. So I got baptized. And um, during that baptism, something happened. As I stepped into the water, just before they dipped me in the water, there was a sharp thorn in the water. And that would become apparent later. I stepped on top of the sharp thorn. It went through my feet and to the bones at the point where they were dipping me in the water. So I went in the water in pain, and when I got out, um, I was literally limping onto the, the shore of the river, or the stream, and blood gushing out of my feet. The Lord did that for, for a reason, and um, I probably, well, I'll share that as we go on the testimony. So, yeah, um, fast forward to the time, uh, uh, my, my, my little experience with the Buddhist meditation book. So it, it sort of kindled my interest. There was something there. I've never experienced anything like it. That was my very, very first time out of body through meditations. So later on during life, um, I got the opportunity to come to the UK to study uh, mechanical engineering. Actually, I came to Bolton, just around the corner there. Yeah, uh, Bolton Institute, it was called at the time. And now I think it's Bolton University. Um, yeah. And... Um, my experience with the Buddhist meditation got me so interested in the occult. But I, all of a sudden, leaving Ghana, coming to the UK and going to school, I had freedom. So I was not sort of, well, I didn't have to go to church with anyone um, back home. Everyone went to church. My dad went to church. My parents, everybody, brothers and sisters. Now I had freedom. I've broken off all that so I could do whatever I want. So I, I remember going to the uh, bookshops, uh, buying a lot more books about magic or cult, and I started practicing them. And it quickly became real. I remember one time um, being in my student accommodation, my little cubicle, and I, I remember um, the student next door. Um, I remember hearing him and two girls in, the, in his room, and they were chatting, watching TV and laughing. And I thought, what if I could meditate and go there? So I literally laid on my bed, did a bit of meditation. Before I knew it, I astral projected, and I was in their living room, stood in front of the TV, and he was sat on the bed with one, one girl sat next, to her, sat next to him, and one girl sat on the floor. They did not see me. I was literally stood in front of their TV watching them. And I was like, wow, so this is really real. That was it. I was sold out to the occult. So that drew me into the new age. Um, I started practicing um, so many things, anything but Christianity. No one would, most of my friends here um, at the time, uh, some of them were Christians, but now look back, um, 
they, they invited me to come to church and I told them, no, there's no point in going to church. There's no power there. You don't experience anything. It's just dry. You go to church, people sing, people, they go back with whatever they come with. And, and I've, I've seen something new. I could astral project. I was meeting things. There's, I was speaking to spirits that were telling me they were my guides. And they could tell me something that would actually happen. So I saw more power there. And that was my break with Christianity. So I remember um, one of these days um, during my, um, my early student years in the UK, about 2013, I remember meditating and astral projecting and then going to a place to meet people in a realm somewhere. And they told me they were my spirit guides. Yeah, they told me they were my spirit guides and, and that they were watching, they've been watching over me and everything. It was a very, very big auditorium. Um, there were stuff that looked like aircraft parked outside. It was strange. It was a strange setting. And after, we had a lot of communication, which I've forgotten most of it. But at the end of it, one female came to me, very, very beautiful looking, blonde. She came to me and she said to me, what would I want from them? And then I, I thought, hmm, what would I want from them? And I thought, aha, uh -huh. uh, Saturday's uh, jackpot is 9.8 million. So, hmm, <laughs> can you give me the numbers to your uh, Saturday's jackpot? They were like, yeah, why not? So they took me to this, uh, they took me to a certain room which had a massive machine that covered uh, from floor to ceiling, massive wall, and there was maybe millions or billions of balls in there, different colors. No color was the same, it was weird. And he said to me, pre uh, there was a button there, and he said, press that button. I pressed it, mm -hmm. and six numbers came out. And I remember, I think, um, three, seven, and 11. The other three, I can't remember. They came out, and she told me, those are the numbers for Saturday's jackpot. And I thought, wow, I'm rich, 9.8 million. I've only been in the country, what, um, a year, a year or two, and now I'm going to win <laughs> the jackpot. So, yeah. I, I remember coming back from that astral projection, waking up, so excited, jumping, literally, I woke up about three o'clock in the morning, and I was jumping on top of the bed like I'm going to be a millionaire. Um, but stupidly, then I thought, now I think it was the grace of God. Um, I did not write the numbers down. I should have written them down, because when I came back, they were so real and vivid in my mind. They didn't write them down, went back to sleep. Woke up about seven o'clock, I'm like, oh yeah, the numbers, you need to write them down. So when I started to write down, I only remember those three numbers I mentioned to you. The last three I couldn't remember, so I was kicking myself and I was like, what have I just done? I wish I could go back and um, get the numbers, but I, I couldn't. So anyway, I made up the last three numbers and went and played the lottery. And that, uh, that Saturday, yeah, I remember sitting down watching the... Um, the the thing on TV and the numbers came out in the exact order they gave me every single number and when the other numbers that I forgot came out I remember now I knew wow that was the number that was the number that was the number and then I only won ten pound because it, 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 I only got three numbers yeah. yeah so that was a painful experience because I knew that was my money nine point eight million and I'd already planned how I was going to spend that I, I was going to buy the Ferraris all these things have a big house. Have a harem of girls and all that. God was like, no. God, God was like, no. At the time, I didn't know it was God. God has always been in my life, but I did not know that God was in my life. So, yeah, I did kick myself. I was, I kicked myself for months because nobody won that jackpot, 9.8. Nobody won it that week. It rolled over, uh, I think, a couple of times before it got split by um, some different people. Won the number. So, yeah. That was a painful experience for me, but it really told, it showed me that what I was practicing was real. Because I met these spirit guys, they were real. It's, it's more real when you are out there in the spirit realm, more real than we are here. Your vision, everything is heightened. It's like, uh, I, I, I cannot even say, you have to experience it to know. So that pulled me into a lot of things. And around that time, I joined the armed forces. So I was in the armed forces practicing all these things. Yeah, I was in the armed forces practicing all these things, but I kept it to myself. I had never really, I never really like told anybody about it. I was just quiet um, with it. And I remember one of my friends, uh, he's from Scotland. Um, I've, I, I always used to ask him, look, can I come with you to Scotland? And 
um, he's always like, nah, blah, blah, blah. He was always giving me excuses why he wouldn't take me to Scotland. So one Easter, I remember it was 20, 2007 Easter. Easter um, um, the Easter break, I think it was a Thursday. He was driving out of camp to go to Scotland, Glasgow. And I said to him, look, I'm coming with you. I jumped into, I stopped his car, jumped in, into his car, got him to drive to my block. I just parked a backpack and then we went. We had a very lovely experience with his family and everything. Um, and when we were coming, he was telling me about free, the Freemasons and everything. Um, yeah, mentioning Jay-Z and all these people had their Freemasons and all that. Um, so that came to my interest. But he sort of suggested that um, if I wanted to join, they could recommend me. You need two people to recommend me and all that. But for some strange reason, the Lord blocked that from my mind. Because at that time, I was seriously seeking to go deep into the occult. I remember when I first joined the armed forces, I wrote to uh, one of the biggest occult um, organizations. I'm not going to mention their name um, here. I wrote to them and told them about how interested I am. I wanted to join their society and practice with them. And I remember them writing back, say, telling me that they are, they, are, they are impressed with my interest in the organization, but uh, they, they wish me well. They want me to continue seeking and I'll find what I'm looking for, but uh, they, will not, they, they cannot accept me into their organization. I was quite shocked by that. And that is another thing that the Lord did, because all that while I've been seeking to join your call, the number of th times I've contacted people, I've even uh, uh, looked for adverts, people, maybe certain small covens, which I could join to practice, because I was a sole practitioner. I, was what they, I did what they call self-initiation. I read the books on how to do the rituals, and I did the rituals myself. I was practicing Kabbalah. Um, I, I was into a lot of Buddhism. This new age stuff, everything you name it, I've done it. I've, um, um, uh, the secret, uh, what do you call, um, yeah, the secret, you manifest, you think and you manifest and all that. I had books on all of that. Um, Alistair, uh, Alistair Crowley, I don't know if you guys know about him. He's, uh, he's, he used to be called the Beast. Yeah, yeah, yeah he, was, um, he was one of my main role models. I used to watch a lot of things about him and all of that. And um, the guy that started the satanic um, um, church in uh, San Diego, uh, Anton Levy. Mm -hmm. Anton Levy was my man as well. I used to watch uh, stuff that he does. He, he had a lot of stuff. And I used to watch rituals. There's a guy, I'm not going to mention his name because he does rituals actually and put them on YouTube. I used to watch his rituals and everything, cut himself and call demons and everything. And I was practicing. The only thing is that I was not cutting myself because I love myself too much. I didn't want to see any scar on me or anything like just draw blood. I would not draw blood. But I was calling demons. No, the, the funny thing is, sometimes you feel like nothing happened, but every time, and this is a warning to everyone, every time you pick an occult book, every time you, you practice a ritual, and you feel that like nothing happened, to you physically nothing happened, but spiritually a lot happens. Just by reading an occult book, you just invite demons into yourself. I was just infesting myself with demons and demons upon demons. My character changed. I was... I was literally um, something that right now, when I look back, I can't recognize. You know, I changed to become something else. And all my desire, I hated Jesus Christ. Yeah, the last word I wanted to hear was Jesus. You know, it, it was all about chasing girls, thinking about how to get money, and um, how am I going to get more power. So I remember one time I did a meditation, um, and I called these... Uh, spirit beings come and take my, my, my soul and go and in, initiate me. So I remember li lying in my, uh, on my bed and then what I felt was, I, I cannot explain it, it's like a thousand volts of electricity go through my body from, from the bottom of my feet to the top of my head. And I, it, it was also like, you know that thing they dig the road with? What's the name of that thing? Like the hammer thing? Yeah. Shakes. I, the whole of my body was vibrating. That, 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 the, that's nothing compared to how much my body was vibrating. Whether that was actually happening physically, I don't know. But the electricity I felt everywhere on my body and it was so strong. And then I remember just shouting. This didn't come from me, by the way. I remember shouting, I reject this experience in the name of Jesus Christ. And as soon as I shouted that, everything stopped. And then I woke up and I kicked myself. Like, what, what did I just say? They came to take me and why did I shout Jesus? You know what I mean? So I rejected the experience. And that, after um, 
after the experience stopped, I knew that they had come to take me to go and initiate me um, in the spiritual realms. But for some strange reason, God intervened. Yeah. And around about those times as well, during uh, one of my meditations, I've literally just meditated and f fallen asleep. And I woke up. As soon as I woke up, um, I saw Baphomet sat there. I woke up and, and I was not sleeping. Baphomet was sat there staring me in the face. It's, 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 it's half human, half goat. All right, yeah, he's right, right. got a goat head, um, um, female, well, I'll say female torso because he's got breast, mm -hmm. and he's got a male phallus, right, right, and right. a goat leg. Right. He was sat right there staring directly at me. Yeah, so um, that experience lasted for a while. He, he sort of sat there staring at me, and I felt so much love coming from this creature that I've never ever felt before. I've never felt so much love from anyone like that before. So I was looking at him as he was looking at me and all of a sudden he started to disappear gradually. And it took about 10 seconds for him to disappear just so that I know that he was actually there. I was not hallucinating it. So like he was there and then he vanished. He was sat there for a while and then smiled at me, showed me so much love and then started to disappear. Took about 10 seconds and then he vanished and I just, I could see the chair now. And I got up and I said, I'm like, wow, this is real. And that also just, I, I don't know, maybe he, 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 he put demons in me or whatever. Because my interest in your call just got stronger and stronger. The more experience since I'm having, the more I was getting drawn to your call. The more experiences I was having, the more I was getting drawn to your call. So um, fast forward, leaving the armed forces. Um... I just lived a life seeking, seeking to um, be initiated. That was now my main aim. I wanted to be initiated either to, into the Freemasonry, either into um, either any, anything at all that was occult. I was seeking that. Jesus Christ was the last thing on my mind. I didn't have any regard for Jesus. I remember one of my, my best friends that I used to go out with, um, go drinking, chase girls and everything. He converted to become a Christian. And he, as soon as he became a Christian, he became my worst enemy. He used to send me um, messages um, every, every morning at 6 o'clock. You know, one of these long messages with sermons, like it, it, it's encouraging words with uh, Bible quotations. He, used, he, he sent that for months. So I remember one day just waking up, he sent me a message, and I looked at it, I'm like, I called him. And I'm like, look, if you found Jesus and you want to worship Jesus, I don't have a problem with that. Worship your Jesus, but do not disturb me. Let me worship my devil. I, yeah, worship your Jesus, let me worship my devil. If you send me any more messages about this Jesus, I mean, you're, we're, we're going to have words. We're going to have trouble between us. I didn't want to have anything to do with Jesus. As a matter of fact, I hated Jesus. I watched Family Guys. You know that, that, that program called Family Guys, which is kind of like a mockery about God. They, you know, they, they show God and chasing girls and Jesus doing all that. I, I used to watch all those programs. Everything I did was to propagate the occult. And I was one of the biggest uh, sellers of the occult. Let me explain that. Everywhere I went, I evangelized about the occult. So I got so many people interested in the occult. And I was showing them how to meditate, how to astral project, um, how to even manifest. I was even... Uh, a big advocate of um, the secret, so telling people how to manifest because it was happening. Before driving into town, I could imagine a parking spot. There were a, a few parking spots where I lived in, in town, which were free parking spaces. And I imagined my car driving right there and parking in a particular spot. And as I drive there, sometimes I I remember this one time, as I drove down, after I did this meditation, as I, as I drove down, there was a car parked exactly where I meditated and saw me parking. And as I just got there, that car drove out and I drove in. So everything was so real. I used to do rituals before I go to nightclubs. Just, I didn't know how I knew how to do them. It was just there because I was probably full of demons. Um, yeah, I was full of demons, not probably. Yeah. Um, I used to do rituals and then I go to the nightclub and a girl would just chase me for no reason, um, literally chase me around the club and, uh, and I take them home. So these things were working. But then in, in all that, I was not fulfilled. I was so empty. After every ritual, it's like there is more, you need to get more, you need to practice this, you need to do that. Um, 
it, it, it was never fulfilling. I was so empty. Um, I didn't have enough of girls. Um, I used to earn quite a, a, a good sum of money when I was in the forces. Um, it was never satisfying because as soon as the money came, there were so many things, so many distractions that took them out. So you wanted more. You, I wanted to be like one of these rappers. You know, you act like them, you walk like them, you talk like them. Um, yeah, it was, it was a crazy life. It was never fulfilling at all. And I used to have some of the biggest parties uh, around my, 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 my birthday was a big one. New Year was a big one as well. So it was one of these parties, uh, I think it was 2015. 2015, I had um, one of the biggest New Year's parties I've ever had. And um, yeah, uh, we, 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 we did enjoy ourselves. Oh, before I go there, let me explain. Some, something happened. I think it was 2014, 2013. I'm not sure the year. Let's say 2014. Um, New, Year's, uh, New, New Year's Eve, we went out. And um, as we were moving from a bar to a club, I saw a group of boys stood around in a, uh, in a, uh, in a circle smoking something. And I looked at them. I'm like, what are you smoking? They, they just laughed. And I'm like, is that weed? Well, yeah. I'm like, okay. I'll have, I'll have a bit of that. So I just went in there, they just passed me whatever it was. And I took like two or three deep, deep puffs. By the time I finished the third puff, I didn't know what happened. Before I knew it. It's like, you know what a catapult is? Yeah. So it's like someone taking a catapult and shooting your soul out of your body. I was out. Literally, my friend said I just dropped, I dropped like a, a, a bag of sand onto the floor. I was out from maybe 12 till about 4 o'clock in the morning. And my, my friend was trying to call an ambulance. Um, nothing was coming because it, it, New Year's Eve, it, they were so busy. They were so busy. About four hours I was out. And I was, he, he, apparently he, he pulled me. When I came to, he pulled me and I was resting um, on the shop. And I was literally sitting and I was drooling. Yeah. But the experience I had there was, my soul, that catapulted, I myself, I was in um, utter darkness. It was all dark. You could feel the darkness. I didn't hear voices. I didn't hear anything. Just darkness. Um, and I, I don't know what I was thinking. I, yeah, it, 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 was, it was just so dark. I was sat in utter darkness. And I was thinking, how, how can I get out of here? I didn't see any demon. I didn't see anyone just out there in the utter darkness and i was there it, it felt like eternity at, as well there's no time on earth i can compare it to i was just there it wasn't like i was touching the floor either i was floating in utter darkness and then as time went on i saw a light it's like a pinprick of light and then for some strange reason i started to move towards that light and as i moved towards the light the light became bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And then I started to hear my friend shouting, Mike, Mike, what are you doing? It, 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 it's, it's literally beckoning me to come back. So I started to hear, but it was so faint. It, it felt like uh, the only thing I can say is someone just shouting, Mike, Mike, stood on the moon. But you could hear it. You know it's really, really far, but you can still hear it very, very faint. So I kept traveling towards the light. And then I came to it and everything was like merged together. It was like uh, when you look at those uh, kaleidoscope things, how the things move. Well, literally like that. I opened my eyes. That's what I could see around me. And um, a little bit of time later, um, I came to it and I, yeah, he took me on. So that was my first experience with what could be an eternity. Another time I had an experience in a meditation. I was meditating in my bed. In the, uh, in, in the bedroom and my soul left my body and I was just floating above my body and I saw a demon sort of at the door where my, my shoes were the demon turned and looked at me and screeched with a very loud screech it's so horrible, it's metallic and as soon as he looked at me and screeched maybe millions of the same type creature appeared from nowhere and they all jumped on top of me. Some were tearing, biting, punching. Some were entering. It, it was unreal, literally tearing, punching, everything. Um, yeah. So 
I thought, yeah, I remember something that when you're out in the astral realm and you want to go back, you just think of your body. And then, because I was literally just floating about my body. So I literally just went back into my body. And then the vibrations in my body, if anybody's ever astral projected before, they'll know that sometimes you have vibrations. The vibrations in my body were so strong, I went out again. And now more of those demons came and they were entering me, biting, punching, and everything. And I thought, what's going on? All this time I was practicing witchcraft. I, I had all my self-initiation books. I was still doing rituals and everything. Not, not rituals that I was doing to help people or whatever. It's just wanting to better myself spiritually. You know, once in a while I'll do a ritual. Well, I'm going to the nightclub. I want to go. But that's all right. Um, yeah. So I, I, went, I went back into my body for the second time. And the vibrations were still too strong. So I came back out again. And when I came out, literally every time as well, it's more demons. It's like they are calling one to each other. And the majority were entering into my body. The, the rest were biting, kicking, punching. It's like they really hated me. You could feel the hatred that, that was coming from these things. Yeah. And then all I can think about at that time was to say, I am divine. I don't even say it out loud. Uh, out loud. I just thought it in my head. I am divine. As soon as I thought that, there was a bright light that shone. Um, the only thing I can, like, if I'm laid down, sort of like from that direction, just shone from above and entered through my forehead. And as soon as it entered my body, all these million, I don't know, however many demons were punching and jumping into me, they all cut it. Like, you watch a movie and they throw a bump into um, the midst of a troop, and then how they just fly off. Literally, they all just pss, disappeared. And then I felt so much peace. I was floating out there by my body and I felt so much peace. All I could say was, wow. That's all I could say. And then gently floated back into my body. But guess what? That should have told me what I was into was that. But no, I went to my friends that were witches that had a witchcraft shop. And I told them about my experience. I'm like, this is what experience I had. Like, oh, did you? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, yeah, you, you know, you need to do this. You need to get some sage. You need to get this. You need to come and cleanse your house. Yeah, so I got some stuff like sage, magic salts and all this stuff and came and did a ritual in my house and hung some stuff at the door. That was just even inviting more demons. Inviting more demons. You know, um, around about this time too, I, I went and did what they call ayahuasca ritual. I don't know if anybody has heard about ayahuasca. Yep, yeah, I went and did an ayahuasca ritual. Yep, yeah, there were so many things involved in there. We, we, we had to go to a river get some fruits, dress in white and all that, and then rub certain things around you. And uh, after that, we drank the thing. And as the, uh, the ayahuasca started to kick in, I saw a big serpent came, looked at me like that. And I was just sat there staring at it. And he opened his mouth and swallowed me. And I entered into another realm. And in that realm, literally, I saw so many things. Um, all those while, the devil doesn't show you anything for free. Every experience you are going through, the devil, he's piling demons into you. So every time you come out of an experience, you'll be more hardened towards Christ. Not hardened towards anything else. He will not harden you towards uh, Islam or Buddhism or anything. He will harden you towards Jesus Christ. His aim is he, he's not against anything else but Jesus. You know. And so uh, I, I did all those um, rituals. And I remember asking uh, one of the spirits that I experienced in the ayahuasca ritual. He says, I should ask him a question. I'm like, uh, what is the end going to be like? And he showed me, um, he, he literally took me on a vision. And I saw like what felt like a nuclear bomb has gone off in the whole world. And everything, all life was destroyed. The only life that was there was algae. Algae, green, moldy things. It, it, some, yes, canty things just growing. Nothing there. And uh, he said to me that uh, uh, in the end, all will be destroyed. Uh, humanity, literally. There will be no humanity left on earth. This is all going. So I came out of that and I'm like, wow. Through that experience as well, I wanted to experience, I wanted to see what happened in World War I. They took me there as well. And uh, in the World War, if someone got shot, I felt the bullet like I was the one getting shot. If someone got blown apart, I felt. So all these were real. And what these does, like I'll repeat that again, it, it hadn't you towards Jesus Christ. Because you think, well, this is the truth. Because I've seen this. I wasn't there, but I've seen 
you, you know what I mean? It's, it's so, the devil can give you the best experiences in so many things, but he will give you like 99% of the truth when you leave that 1%. And that 1% is enough to, to take you to hell. That 1%. That's why he told Eve, he said, um, um, you will not surely die, but you, 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 you have, and truly when Eve and Adam, they, they, they did not physically die, they died spiritually. They, they had the knowledge that they, they saw, but the 1% was that. They will be separated from God. So yeah, fast forward to my um, conversion because the, the experiences are many. There, there, there are experiences where I've, I've been to the moon and saw things and I've been to other places all, all through these meditations. Um, probably save that for another time. But um, my conversion, so 2015, um, New Year's Eve, um, had the biggest pie. A lot of people came. I had the most beautiful girlfriend at the time. Um, and I remember on the 2nd of January, that's 2016, everybody had left and I was looking, I've, 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 I've just cleaned up the flat and I was sat on my sofa. And I was just thinking, thinking, thinking. All of a sudden, I, I, I just broke into tears. And I was crying and weeping and snow, everything coming out. My, my, I, was, I was really, really crying my heart out. And I remember shouting to God. And I said to God, um, if you created me to live a life that is not pleasing to you, and then at the end you will throw me into hellfire and burn me, then uncreate me. That's how I ended it. So what's the point? Bringing me into this world to live a life that doesn't please you, and then you will then throw me into hell. Uncreate me because you have the power to do that. After that, I just kept crying and crying and crying and crying. Um, I must have cried about 30 minutes or more. And all of a sudden, there was peace. And after the peace, I felt a voice that came only, f I can only explain that. It's a voice that came from my heart. And it said, um, go and pour all those drinks in the bin. Now, these are drinks that were left over from the um, New Year's Eve party one of the biggest parties I, I had. It's like, go and open the beer drinks and pour them in the bin. The fridge was still full of beers because no one was drinking the beers. We were all drinking spirits. And there was a lot of spirits left over. And one of my friends had bought me a two-liter bottle of Jack Daniels. That was my favorite drink. And I hid that in my cupboard in my bedroom because I didn't want to share that one. I would share everything else, but not the Jack Daniels. I was going to drink that on my own. So he said to me, go and pour the drinks in the um, drain. I, initially, I doubted the voice. And he was stirring the second time. He was not playing with me. I go and pour him in the drain. I'm like, oh, all right. <laughs> yeah. So um, I went and one after the other, I took every uh, the, the cans of beers, cracked them open, poured them in the uh, uh, in the drain. And then once I finished them, I had two more crates in the cupboard somewhere. I went and got all those crates and cracked them open, poured all of them, the whole flat tank of beer. Mm -hmm. And then after that, I went through the spirits. Now, when I finished those spirits, I went and sat down. I'm like, okay, I'm done. And then I heard a voice. It's like, yeah, the one in the bedroom, go and get it and pour it in the drain. <laughs> How do you know? Who are you? <laughs> you know? what, what is this? So I resisted down. I'm like, that's my favorite drink. I like, no, go and get it, pour it down the drain. So I'm thinking, he's not going to let go, is he? So I, I, I went and got that one. And as I was going to get that one, another voice came. And that voice like, oh, but at least drink it. You know, don't, don't, don't waste it. I mean, it was in prison, right? Drink it. And after that, don't drink again. And the voice said, no, go and get a drink, pour it down the drain. So literally, I was almost in tears again going to get the Jack Daniels because I, it was literally my favorite drink. I could drink Jack Daniels on the rocks. Literally just smash them down. So I got that and came and poured that down the drain. Um, not very happy about that one, but did it anyway. And then after that, he said to me, well, the, the packets of cigarettes that you've got left, throw them in the bin. That one I didn't resist because, uh, to be honest, for some reason, I didn't really like smoking. I just couldn't stop smoking because everyone that smokes knows the, the things that go through smoking, coughing and everything. So I literally took my packet of cigarettes. It was only left three in there, went downstairs, tore, shred them in pieces and put them in the bin. Since that day, I've not drunk alcohol ever. Uh, I've not smoked. Before that too, I used to do drugs. So you name all the drugs apart from heroin and crack. 
I've done all the drugs. Sometimes you go to uh, this, uh, I, I go to one of my friends, he was a drug dealer. Um, no, not a dealer, he knew the dealers. So he always had drugs. Literally, you sat, you be sat there and someone would walk in with something, smoking something, it's not funny. But then you pass it around and everybody will smoke it. And then you go and do a line here, you do something there. It was literally like that. So I've, I've done drugs that I don't even know what they are called. Wow. Literally, done so many drugs, I'm, I don't know what they are called. Since that day, never did any drug. The funny thing is, I never, have, I never had what they call withdrawals. Cigarettes, I tried to quit cigarettes before and I, I did quit for two years. And I had bad withdrawals for four months. But since that day, I just quit smoking. And the first time I tried quit, quitting smoking, I didn't know what to do with my right hand because, you know, when, you know what I mean? Yeah, that movement it just disappeared. So I quit smoking and that. And I, I remember my girlfriend as well. I told her, look, now I think something is happening to me. I think I'm becoming a Christian. Uh, so we can't have sex anymore. She's like, yeah, you're a man, I'm a woman. Um, I can handle it, but you, you can't. I know you, you can't handle it. I'm like, yeah, well, I mean, if, 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 if you stay with me and... Um, we go through this. I'll get, I'll, I'll, we'll get married in September. Mind you, this is in about January, February. And she said, yeah, I can handle it. But I couldn't control myself. So maybe uh, a few weeks down the line, we, we had sex. And after that, we got hit, both me and my, uh, my girlfriend at the time. We, 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 we got sick. Something, I don't know what it is. Yes, yeah, something just happened to both of us. We got sick. It was so bad. We were, we were both sick for two solid weeks. And after that, I'm like, nah, I'm not having sex again. <laughs> Literally, I'm not having sex again. So that was when I started to realize that, that that cry, you know, when I sat there and I challenged God to uncreate me, he heard me. And then all of a sudden, I had an, uh, a desire to read the Bible. I had a desire for things like um, watching uh, sermons on YouTube and all that, which I didn't have before. Um, at first, if I was going on the internet, it was probably porn or um, to watch illegal movies. Yeah. Let's call it spade a spade, you know. But now I didn't have any interest for any, anything porn, anything um, illegal movies, all those things that I was interested in. I was no more interested in them. And I remember take, picking up a phone and calling my friends because my house where I lived was literally five minutes or ten minutes walk into town. So that's where everybody came. We had the before parties, before we went to the club. So we, we all meet in my place, have drinks, and then go to the clubs. After that, we come back to my house and sometimes have an after party or just chill. Or if you brought a girl, just bring them there and then whatever. I remember picking up the phone and calling my friends and telling them, look, guys, I still, you can still come to my house and chill, but you can't drink alcohol in my, my flat. And if you go drinking and you finish drinking, you can't come back to my flat because I will not have you drunk in my flat. You can't bring girls to my flat either. So that was the end of our, our, my, my friendship with all these people that I've known that were like really, really good friends. And to be honest, they supported me through a lot. But guess what? Um, they couldn't benefit from me anymore. So um, that was the end of our relationship. And since then, the Lord has been growing me. Yeah, he, he put a strong desire in me to read the Bible. And I've read the Bible from cover to cover a few times now. Um, he's grown me in grace. And um, I... One thing I'll say is that there's a, a, there's a vast difference between when we, 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 there's a vast difference between serving the devil and serving God. When I was going through all those experiences, when I was going through all those experiences, I thought I was doing what I wanted. But it was only when I came to Christ that I realized that I was my mind was not my own. There were spirits or demons that were that had absolute control of my thought process, the things that I did. So the decisions that I made were not necessarily my decisions. It, it was what the spirit wanted. Like, as you mean, um, for, for instance, uh, smoking cigarettes. It's when I feel, I, you, you feel it within you that you, you need to smoke and then you go to smoke. But when I came to Christ, I realized that that feeling of wanting to smoke was not my own natural feeling because I naturally hated smoking. I didn't like it. I tried to quit so many times. But when that spirit that was already in me, controlling me, wanted a cigarette, I had no power over it. I had to go and get the cigarette. When that spirit in me wanted to watch porn, I had no power over it. 
I had to watch porn. So I came, when I came to Christ, I realized that when they talk about freedom, in Christ is where you have freedom. When you live your own life, when you live for anything else, you are under manipulation by the devil, absolute control of the devil, and you don't know it. And that is what I've, I've realized. I, right now, um, I don't have as many friends, but trust me, I have peace. I have peace. I could stay in my own flat or my own for weeks on end, not going anywhere, just me and the Bible and um, sermons. And literally, this lockdown that we had was one of the best times I ever had. I didn't go to work. I was fellowed for, uh, for, 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 for a period of time. And um, all I did was watch sermons and um, read the Bible and never got old. And the, 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 the most important thing is that Jesus Christ also started to open my mind to really understand what I'm reading. So there was communication there, the Holy Spirit communicating with me. And it's, it's, it's such a wonderful experience. There is much freedom in Jesus Christ. Than we, we truly have our will when we are in Jesus Christ, but not to do as we please, as in to please the devil with it. You know, it's, 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 it's always good to serve the Lord. Like when you do what the Lord wants, you feel peace within your heart because that is what you naturally were created for. We're created in his image and his desires naturally are our natural desires. But when we wander away from him, we don't find peace. We try to fit um, square, um, square poles in uh, round holes and they'll never fit because we are not designed to be controlled by demons. We're designed for the Holy Spirit to live in us and to move us. Until you have the Holy Spirit in you, you will never have peace. So this is my testimony. Now I've been a Christian yeah, all this while. Um, yep, yeah, uh, I, I know a lot of people did say, "Well, we'll see how long that lasts." And I remember saying to God, what, 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 "One girl that she, she's a friend of um, um, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends. I remember she uh, she called me one Saturday and she's like, Mike, let's go out.' I'm like, "I'm not going out.' She's like, "Mike, I'm paying for everything." And she usually does. I'm paying for everything. The gate fee, the drinks, everything. Let's just go out. Just come with me. I'm feeling lonely. Let's go out. I'm not, I'm not going out. She drove to my house. And I said, you're not coming up. She's like, well, if you don't come up, I'll stay up downstairs. So I went downstairs. And we had this conversation. She's like, what's happening with you, man? I'm like, I think I'm becoming a Christian. And she's like, well, <laughs> you Christian? I'm like, yeah. It's like, no, but let's just go out. Yeah, you don't even have to drink all these. I'm like, no, I'm not coming out because the music, it, it, it grieves me. And she's like, we'll see how long that lasts. And I said to her, well, I guess we'll see. So when I went back, I said to the Lord, Lord, you heard, you pulled me out of this. Now I've been challenged. We'll see how long this lasts. It's not in my power to keep me with you. It's in your power. So prove them wrong. And every day he proves them wrong. Even when... I have battles with the Lord. He always come, comes up to him because um, I've dedicated my life to him. And he's faithful. You know, we can, the Lord is always where he is. Wherever you leave the Lord, he's always there waiting for you. And there is one thing I discovered in my life because I tried so hard to join your call and other stuff and the Lord did not allow me. Um, I realized that the Lord had, he, he put a band around me. So I could go as far as he would let me. It's like tying a rope to someone and then tying the, the, the end of that rope to a pole. So you've got a radius where you can, you can move to the end of that radius, but you cannot go further because then you are tugged back. And the Lord allowed me within my radius. I did everything I wanted to do with the devil. He would not let me get initiated. Even though I've, I initiated myself in all these rituals and all that and had demons and was infested, but he would not let me get past a certain place because he knew whom I was to him. And I think there is someone out there, um, you, you may be going through what I've, uh, I've been through. The Lord is calling his children. He's calling all of us. We are all precious to Jesus. And Jesus loves you. You may not feel that right now. You may be going through a lot. Trust me, he loves you. The devil is a liar. He, can, he will only use you till you become useless to him. Then he, he gets rid of you. But Jesus Christ is faithful. He stood where you left him. Come back to him. And he will save you.